Hey everyone, it's Rusty Ingalls here from Retro Games Rediscovered. Today I've got something really special to share with all of you. Over the weekend I attended the Kickstarter event in Nottingham, UK. It was an amazing experience and I picked up a fantastic new piece of hardware. The A600 by Amiga Kit. Now before we dive in, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all things retro. Now, let's take a look inside the box. This is the A600GS, a new game system and classic 68K computer. It's similar to the A500 Mini by Retro Games, but offers a full computer experience rather than just being a mini console. Now let's have a look inside the box. Here we have the A600GS itself. It comes with a four gig of system memory and 40, uh, sorry, 64 gig of storage. I was lucky enough to speak to Matthew Lehman, who is the managing director of Amiga Kit. And uh, he talked me through the manual, talked me through all of this, all of the details. He gave a really good presentation, actually, at, um, at Kickstart about the device itself. Um, and uh, so it, this, this manual has been designed so it's very, very familiar to those uh, users of Workbench. And um, it's obviously got everything you need to go into it. The beauty of this device, I think, is the, um, the fact that it's got Ethernet plugged, in, Ethernet available. Um, you can attach it to an HDMI attaching a joystick or sorry a joypad or a mouse a modern joypad or a mouse and also it's got a nine pin uh, adapter as well so which i've learned was called a dp5 uh, i may have got that completely wrong but um i think it's called dp5 anyway uh, please if i've got that wrong i'm sure people will let me know in the comments um yeah so uh, so uh, d d9 D9. Anyway, uh, it's got. Uh, it looks as if it's got Amiga Bench desktop built into it. It's got up to one meg of fast memory um, and three USB ports as well. But the thing itself, it just looks. It looks lovely. I mean, this manual's pretty cool. It's got a joypad. There is a, the possibility of buying a mouse as well. I think uh, mouse mice. Sorry, uh, I could have bought one for nine pounds, but I decided not to. Not for not because it was a uh, particularly bad product it looks really really nice little mouse but i've just got lots of usb mouse, mice that's all so this is the uh, a600 gs itself let me just get that out of the box there um it's quite light actually it's got a lovely nice uh amiga tick on the front and a600 gs there um it comes with four gig of system memory and 64 gig of storage um, I'm lucky enough to have serial number 63, which is quite nice. Um, this they had a, several on sale there. There are quite a few on sale. This I don't think as of as of this video right now, as I'm recording this, you can't actually buy these from their website at the moment. Um, so I think this is uh, probably one of the first reviews actually, which I'm I'm uh, very grateful for. Uh, and this is the official joypad. Let me get this up here. Yeah, USB there. And it's got, uh, f it features four independent fire buttons and two function buttons. Um, it also includes two shoulder pads and it's got branded of the A600 GS logo just here as well. Um, the mouse, as I say, it's, it is essential uh, for using applications like Personal Paint and Optimed, which are bundled into here as well. Um, it, uh, it features just a, it's a mouse wheel and an optical sensor as well. So they're looking at the ports here. We've got um, we've got USB ports here, Ethernet, and another USB. Uh, is that, I think that looks like it's USB C, which is obviously for uh, power, and HDMI, mini HDMI out. Um, there's a little bit of movement on this here, but I think that's that's to be expected, to be honest. Um, and then if we could turn it around here, these are the traditional uh, game ports, which all Amiga and uh, ST owners would know about, but um, obviously just for concentrate on Amiga for now and even Atari uh, 2600s and all the sort of the old um, nine pin controllers yeah so um, this comes with um, it comes with quite a few bits pre-installed um, it's got Ami Bench installed on it which I'm going to come to later and it's got games installed on it as well and the games menu system it actually has Octomed uh, pre-installed as well which I'm really looking forward to getting um, powered up and uh, let's have a look. We can do lots of different things. We've seen demos. We can install um, files on it. We can add files. We can add, uh, manage ROM files and so on. So there's lots of things we can do on here. Um, the uh, setting up looks as if it's going to be pretty straightforward. So let's hit, let's connect it to a monitor uh, and via HDMI and 
power it up. One thing I've just found actually, as I've just opened all of the box up, is um, the, it's actually a Raspberry Pi, but it's a Raspberry Pi mini HDMI out to a full HDMI, and it's got the USB-C uh, power adapter, or USB-C cable, sorry, which obviously we can use for the power, which is really nice to be honest. That is a massive, massive uh, bonus, because lots of things don't come nowadays. They come with the HDMI possibly, but they don't necessarily come with the power. A power cable, so that's a really nice touch to the uh, Ami kit and uh, or Amiga kit, sorry, uh, and the uh, developers of the A600GS. So, yeah, massive bonus points to them for that. That's 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 brilliant. Anyway, let's get this thing plugged in. Um, okay, so we've got the screen now. Um, this is powering up. Right, A600GS Amiga kit. Press any key or button to start. Let's give this a go. Then let's just try start. Okay. Oh. Hello, what's happened to you? Oh, crikey, what happened there? Um, let's create an account. Ah, I haven't got a keyboard. Right, okay. For the benefit of this, let's not worry about a keyboard for now. Let's go to Game and Applications. And then we have AmiBench. Looking at this, um, the A600, it does come with, sorry, the A600GS, I beg your pardon. Um, it comes with pre-installed, it comes pre-installed, sorry, with a range of classic applications and games. One of the pre-installed games is uh, Thunder Hell by Paolo Catani. Um, it's a classic horizontal scrolling uh, shoot 'em up It also includes Octomed version 8, Personal Paint, Personal Paint version 7.4, 7 and Final Writer versus version 7. It's also got directory opus 4 GPL. And these applications have been updated with new features and are ready to use as well. So this is AmiBench. Um, very workbenchy, isn't it? It's um, for those people familiar with, I guess, AmiBerry. Uh, let's have a look, see what's on here. So yeah, this is this is very, very, very workbenchy, which is quite nice, really. It's bringing lots of, lots of nice memories back. Um, look at what devs is. DOS drivers, printers. I think you'd potentially use this machine as as a nice uh, a nice working machine, really. A six hundred programs. We can also load in files as well. So um, ADF files you can load in here, and WH WHD load games. I believe you can load into here as well. Um, now let's take a quick look at some of the applications. So Octomed uh, here. Octomed, this is V8, and the music tracker it supports H AHI and CAMD MIDI libraries. You can even plug in a USB to MIDI adapter to play back and edit your MIDI files as well. So yeah, those familiar with Octomed will no doubt know uh, this a lot better than I do. Um, let's see if there's got any uh, any songs in here. Andy's Blues, let's see what that is. Fancy yourself as a as a budding music producer. It's got this on here. Uh, let's quit Ultimate. Can't open screen possibly out of memory. Okay, well let's proceed on that. Uh, personal Paint. It's got P Paint on here. So this is 7.4. This is really similar to Deluxe Paint. I guess they couldn't get the rights to Deluxe Paint, so it's got Personal Paint bundled in. Nice little touch, to be honest. Um, this is a, a power, powerful graphics editor with various new screen modes and features according to the documentation. Uh, let's just wait for this to load. Hmm. Looks as if something's happened here. Yeah, it looks as if my mouse pointers got stuck as well. So what I think maybe we should do is let's Let's unpower it and get it back on again. One thing I did notice while that's booting up actually is the little, 
a little check here as well. Um, and I'm assuming, I can't quite see, but I'm assuming that's a fan in there. Can't feel any, or at least a heat sink in there, I imagine. Press any button. Okay, let's just press this one. Uh, yeah, look, we can actually do this. So let's go through the setup this time because I think it sort of it moved it in the last time. So we'll go to next. I'm assuming we want to press the red button. Ah, here we go. Right. I wonder if we can use it in my mouse for this one as well. This would be much easier. Generic 105 keyboard layout UK. Um, oh, this is nice. We can actually use different UK keyboards as well. Use on screen keyboard always. Only when no real keyboard connected. Yeah, let's choose that one. That's quite nice. Right, next. Um, new Wi Fi connection. That's quite nice. Let's get a Wi Fi connection in there. Can we scan for a Wi Fi? Uh, I guess we can't. I can't type that in at the moment because we've not got uh, a keyboard plugged in. I could obviously use a keyboard, but. And how we type that in without a keyboard. Uh, we'll skip that one. Okay, so let's go into P Paint. Let's try try loading it here instead, um, rather than going into Ami Bench and loading it that way. I do like the graphics on these. I like the way they look like discs as well. I got floppy disks, so that's quite nice. But this is looking a lot more promising. Um, Okay, so let's have a quick look so we can load something. There's going to be some image files here, maybe. Um, BSH files. Let's have a look at what triangle is. Ah, nice. So we can just, we can load as triangle. That's quite nice. Um, let's load an image, see what images. The image has been modified, proceed. Okay, let's have a look at clown. And then proceed. Uh, ask for the images. Oh, look. Oh, so it changes the resolution as well. That's very clever. That's nice. And there was another test image on there as well. So let's load. Let's load test image. So it obviously changes this here as well. So cool. So that's P Paint. I never had P Paint. I had Proton Paint and um, Deluxe Paint, as I'm sure most people had one of those. Um, let's have a look at let's have a look at Dopus Four. I don't actually know what this is. Okay, so this is loaded. I'm assuming is this some sort of disc copy? Is it? Yeah, it must be. Directory opens request enter new current directory. Right, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna play around with that because it looks as if it's got something to do with the disk drives. Uh, really quick, yes. And then I mean these are the games here. It looks as if we can games and applications, manage ROM files, system, auto. Let's click on manage ROM files. Uh, import ROM files, so we could probably import a file there. Or games and applications, that's gonna take us back to this screen. Can we, oh look, this is nice. It sort of filters the games there. So I'm assuming, um, well, it looks as if we can actually import, I imagine, games via USB, pop them into the spare USB port in the back here, um, and then uh, use the, the, the file manager to lo the, get, locate the game, copy the game files to the A600GS, and then uh, launch directly from here. So I'm assuming that they would automatically launch them in here. Um, so this is Thunder Hell. Let's have a quick look at how Thunder Hell uh, plays. <coughs> Bearing in mind we've got the controller here, so um, so yeah, so Thunder Hell. Now, I'm not sure if this game is exclusive for the A600GS. I've never heard of it before myself. Um, so the graphics are pretty cool. So this is a shooter, isn't it? This is a side-scrolling shooter, according to the according to the information I've read. Livello One. You can tell it's developed by a, an Italian chap. Nice. This looks good. What are these things? Ooh. What do we do here? So 
so I can already see the benefit of this over an A600 Mini. Um, I do like the A600 Mini, it's nice and simple, plug it into your TV, uh, but the fact that you could possibly use this machine as uh, an everyday machine, I'd say, maybe, but would people want to use it as an everyday machine? Not quite sure. Um, for me, as a my day job is a, as, a, as a web developer, I could probably use it quite easily for code. Um, would I want to use it for um, developing on? Not quite sure. I know it's got a web browser built in. It's obviously got the um, uh, internet or ethernet port here and it's got wireless built in as well. So that's really, really good. Um, I think to be honest, this machine, I'd say for the price of it, I actually paid 133 pounds for this, which was including VAT. So take the VAT off of that. It's just over hundred pounds, isn't it? And what it actually is, this this is brilliant as a machine. Fantastic, nice and neat, nice and nice and small. Um, got all the ports you'd ever need on the back of this. The fact that it's got uh, Ethernet available as well, and the fact that it came with these two cables is even is even better. Um, I think the A600 GS by Amiga Kit is a really impressive piece of hardware. It combines the nostalgia of a classic Amiga games with the functionality of a modern computer. A big rig shout out to Matthew Lehman from Amiga Kit for creating this incredible device and for taking the time to chat with me at Kickstarter as well. It was really nice talking to him. Now GS is quite interesting. The GS is supposed to be game system. That's what obviously what it stands for. Continuing the theme of the B-52s, GS also stands for one of the B-52 songs. If you know what the song is, let me know in the comments below. And if you're a fan of retro gaming and computing, the A600 GS is definitely worth checking out. I'll leave a link in the description for more information. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more retro gaming content. Until next time, I've been Rusty Ingalls. See you soon.